Austin, some of the headlines that came out of that meeting were, for example, we think we can cut regulations by 75% and that we will cut taxes massively. I want to ask you if this could goose animal spirits in a positive way. We're already seeing sentiment get better. Uh, you know, I don't know. It depends what you mean by animal spirits. I think the argument that massively cutting taxes at the top end of the income distribution or of corporations is going to pay for itself by generating GDP growth, that's been disproven many, many times in the past, and that will not happen. Uh, I, I'm sure that if you give enough tax subsidy or cut taxes enough, th that you could induce some more investment, uh, and that would, that would be potentially be a positive. But, you know, at the same time we're announcing those, we're also announcing things like tariffs and anybody that's going to ship products into the U.S. might have to pay a huge border tax. Um, if you do that, you know, the biggest opponents of that are the very manufacturing companies themselves that Donald Trump is meeting with, because as you know, most of the large U.S. manufacturers have very integrated supply chains around the world. And so Ford, if they're making cars in the U.S., is still getting a bunch of parts from plants that are around the world. So if they have to pay huge tariffs on that, it's going to end up having a negative impact on manufacturing within the U.S. Well, just to play devil's advocate, you say that the argument has been disproven that tax cuts do promote economic growth or better economic growth. Torsten Slock of Deutsche Bank Securities you know, compares this era with, say, Bush II and also Reagan. And if we can just bring up, a, we have a, a full screen of what he says. He says, fundamentally, Reagan, Bush II and Trump's policies share the common goal of stimulating stronger supply side growth. The primary differences are that Trump is expected to place greater emphasis on deregulation and corporate rather than personal income taxes and has more demand side elements like infrastructure spending. So why shouldn't this time be more like the Reagan era than, say, Bush II? Why shouldn't it be different? Well, I, I think it's very similar to the Bush II era the, and the, literally the same people that are saying that this is going to unleash economic growth. Those same people said the exact same thing about the Bush II policies to cut taxes for high income people and corporations. And it didn't work then. And I doubt it will work this time. The difference between Reagan, I mean, with Reagan, you have a massive tailwind helping you. Uh, of population growth. So the demographics, we were, a, we were a younger country and the population was growing, so you, you obviously were going to get substantially more economic growth coming from that. We'll see on the, on the deregulatory side, maybe they, I, I'm, I'm not rooting against them, I'm rooting for them. I hope that they can increase the growth rate to 5% or whatever it is that they, that they say. That would be wonderful for all of us. Uh, I just think the lessons of the Bush era when he did almost exactly what they're talking about doing and it did not have the outcome that they're promising, I think should at least be a little sobering and, and we should remember that. Uh, Austin, uh, big stock's been put on you know, reversing the decline in American manufacturing. Is it reversible or not? Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, the, the overall, as you know, around the world, all advanced countries, as productivity improves, mostly it's service sectors th that have been the, the great expanders. Manufacturing has been trending down in all the advanced countries for 50 straight years. So you're going against a tough trend. Um, and I don't think that putting a huge tariff on the supply chain of U.S. manufacturing is going to prove to be good. Hopefully, they, as I say, if they can find some, some hidden secret regulations that increase manufacturing, that would be great. Uh, but I think given the last 72 hours of the, of the Trump administration in which they seem to be announcing things directly contradictory to what they promised in the campaign. I would not necessarily count on the fact that Donald Trump promised to increase manufacturing jobs to indicate that he's actually going to do that.